I also picked up White Knight Chronicles, another game that I have been playing a lot of. Now, I will warn you that this game is definitely not for everybody. It's for fans of the Monster Hunter games, Fantasy Star online games, and to some extent, massively online player RPGs like, say, Final Fantasy XI. Now, this is a grinder's game. If you're the type of person where you like to grind levels, grind quests, get materials to upgrade your weapons and your armor, this game will probably be right up your alley. If you hate that stuff, avoid White Knight Chronicles at all costs. Basically what it boils down to is, it's a single player game with an online component where up to four people co can cooperate together and go through quests. Now, basically, the whole game, if, if you play through the single player, it's definitely not worth buying. It's just a very simplistic single player game, the story is very lacking, the characters are really, you don't get attached to them whatsoever. I'm about to finish the game right now and I have to say, do not buy this game for the single player. The online aspect, however, is much more fun. Uh, basically, you go online, you can go into a lobby with up to 12 people, you can go on quests with up to three other people, so four player quests. Those quests involve defeating bosses, escort quests, finding you know items, and once you complete the quest, you get some experience, you get some money, you get some items, you use those items to craft new weapons, new armor, upgrade your weapon and armor, and the coolest part about this game is you can actually make your own town similar to the Dark Cloud series, which is fitting considering it's made from level 5, the creators of Dark Cloud. You can make your towns, you can position the houses, the, the NPCs in there, uh, the harvest points and you know trees and crates and where you put your weapons and armor shops. You can make those towns, and then you can play online, and your friends can come in, even when you're offline, go to your town. You can go to their town. The game is all about gathering materials, leveling up your character, evolving your town, and, uh, you know, getting to the, to the maximum level, and reincarnating, and getting more skill points. If this sounds like that's the kind of game that you want, if you're fans of the Monster Hunter series, you'll probably like, like White Knight Chronicles. Um, I cannot recommend it to everybody. Even if you're a grind-heavy person, you know, the game is still kind of mediocre. You can make your own combos for your attacks, but it is kind of basic. The combat system is very similar to Final Fantasy XI in terms of its real-time, but you still have have a wait period before you can do your attacks. So, check out White Knight Chronicles if what I explained seems like it might be your kind of RPG. For the Wii, I picked up Tatsunoko vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. Now, this is a game that... I kind of didn't know if I was going to buy it or not, but I watched some videos and it looked like a lot of fun. It, it's a true successor, from what they're saying, to the Capcom vs. series, so Marvel vs. Capcom, and it's exclusive to the Wii. Now, to go along with this, I also picked up this pretty awesome Tatsunoko vs. Capcom uh, fighting arcade stick. Now, this retails for $80, but I did not pay that much. I got it for like $50. And it's a very nice arcade stick, actually. Um, and it's quite heavy, so I'll show you what that looks like really fast in here. It comes in the box like this, and it's got some nice artwork on there. It's very heavy, and it seems like it's a very well-made arcade fighting stick. This is the first arcade fighting stick I've bought for any of the current generation consoles, and uh, this seems like it's the best one from what I've read. People are very happy with their purchase. And I also figured I can use it for, you know, the virtual console games and the WiiWare titles for those of them that I can use it with. Um, so, in terms of the gameplay, it's it feels just like the Marvel vs. Capcom games. The engine of the game, in terms of the graphics, is in 3D, so think of it as like a scaled-back version of Street Fighter 4 in terms of the way the graphics are presented. Um, Tatsunoko is basically a group of different anime characters from Japan that us Americans have no idea about any of these shows, really. I don't know any of the Tatsunoko characters whatsoever. Uh, but they do have Capcom characters, you know, they got Mega Man, they got Street Fighter characters, Darkstalker, um, they even have Frank West from uh, Dead, Dead Rising. So it's it's got a pretty cool cast of characters, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's kind of pick up and play. It's not as complicated as the other Versus games. Um, in terms of the combos, it's, it's pretty basic, so it's pretty easy for me to play since I'm not, I'm not a big fighting game junkie. I played online a bit. It was kind of laggy because I was practicing like aerial combos in the single player and I got it down. I went online and there was like just enough lag to screw me up so it's it's a little laggy online from when I played so it can be a little bit tough on there but in terms of the single player I'd still say it's worth picking up. I'm enjoying it and I'm not a huge fighting fan so I think it's worth a recommendation. On the Nintendo DS I bought an RPG published by Nintendo called Gl Glory of Heracles. And uh, I have to say, I was, I was I'm pretty disappointed with this title. Um, I don't think I'm going to go back to it. It's 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 very basic. The characters are kind of flat right now. 
It's a traditional turn-based RPG, but in, during the battles, they have like little touch-based mini-games that are not fun. They kind of slow down the combat. Um, in terms of the graphics, it's sort of like a cel-shaded cartoon look. The graphics look pretty nice. They kind of remind me of uh, Golden Sun to some extent. But it's it's an RPG set in ancient Greece with, you know, Heracles or Hercules and, you know, the different Greek gods and everything. It, ha it sort of has that theme going on, so it's a pretty cool theme. This is actually a series that's been out in Japan for quite some time now, and this is the first one that they've ported over to America. Sadly, though, it's it's just not that fun. Um, I, it's very easy as well, and I asked on a message board if it ever gets harder. And sadly, supposedly, the game is pretty easy throughout, so I'm kind of disappointed in this one. I, I really wouldn't recommend it. And also, lastly, I got a game called Hands-On Tangrams, and, uh, I was, it was nice enough that Karen, one of the uh, artists of this game, got me a fully signed copy. I don't know if you can see there. Uh, so the development team, most of the development team signed their copy for me, and that was very nice. Now, for those of you that don't know what Tangrams are, which I truly didn't know what they were before I got this game, um, it's, it's really meant for kids where you have different shaped pieces of wood, seven different shapes, and you have to piece them together in, to make a shape of an animal or, you know, different shapes that resemble you know, like, some, anything that kids would like, like lions or spaceships and stuff like that, and, um, there's a hundred different puzzles in this game, and I'm halfway through, and I have to admit, it was pretty addicting. It's one of those games where, you know, you just say, all right, I just want to do one more puzzle. Um, they take anywhere from 15 seconds to a couple of minutes to solve, and sometimes it, it takes me a long time to, you know, get in there and solve the puzzle. I mean, these, this is, it's meant for kids, but honestly... It still has an appeal for gamers like myself. If you're a parent and you have kids, this is a great game to get them. Um, even on the back, it's it's apparent that it's made for younger kids because they have pictures of younger kids playing it. But um, I had a lot of fun with it. You know, some puzzles were overly easy, but then some of them are very complicated because you have to piece these shapes together just the right way so that they fit together into the shape on the screen. And um, it was addictive enough for me where, you know, a couple of nights I played it for a good hour or two doing puzzles back to back to back and... It's pretty satisfying, so this one might be a little bit hard to find in, you know, your typical GameStop, but, uh, I'll provide a link in the description if you want to order it online, and, um, check it out. I think it's, it's definitely worthy of a purchase if you're a fan of puzzle games. So that does it, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Games I Bought Recently. I'll see you soon.